Love it or leave it, dealing with exes in a new relationship, and some awesome interviews. All this and more coming up next because this is Marquette Live. everybody and welcome back to Marquette Live. I'm your host, Jessica Clark. I hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving break full of good food and catching up on sleep because these next two weeks are going to be some tough ones with projects, papers, and of course, final exams. But don't let that weigh down your spirits because it's officially the Christmas season and we are that much closer to winter break. Also, to help lift your spirits, we have a fantastic show planned tonight. To start things off, we have Catherine and Kivon with Love It or Leave It. A look at different fashion trends and whether or not you love it, or if we should kick it to the curb. Ladies, take it away. Hello, Marquette, and welcome to Marquette Style. My name is Catherine. And I'm Kivon. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Love It or Leave It. So today, we have tons of trends, and we asked our Twitter followers and our Facebook friends what they thought about current trends today and if we should keep it or throw it away. So my favorite thing on here, and Kevon brought it, is this turtleneck that you should not be wearing to your grandmother's house. <laughs> yes, um, turtlenecks, a lot of people say that turtlenecks are not in, but turtlenecks are definitely in and it could be dressed up. I mean, take this for example, it's a lovely black um, half crop turtleneck and um, you can pair it with high-waisted jeans as the ones I have on now but preferably a different color or you can do a pleated skirt. So welcome ladies and gentlemen the sexy turtleneck. <laughs> All right and then next what we have is this striped tight dress. So there's a couple of things we want to address with this dress. It's tight which I think is a trend that's here to stay. Everyone needs a great body count dress that they can rely on when they're going out and yes. also stripes Mixing patterns was brought up by Bennett Kerwin, who was on our show last week. He's fabulous, and he thinks that mixing patterns is a trend that needs to stay. It can't go anywhere. So we think that I we should totally keep this. Agree. Yes, and I totally agree. And that brings us to um, another mixed pattern that I have um, of one of our very own, Jess Clark. And she said that Infinity scarves are, scarves are in. So they are in to stay, and this one also has mixed pattern. It has polka dots and hearts together, so this is an actually perfect example of both. Yeah, and don't be afraid to be mixing patterns because um, it is something that you can't go wrong. Stay in the same color family, or if you're color blocking, that's great, but you can't go wrong ever with mixing a little something something and pairing it with an infinity scarf. Exactly, and that dress will also look good with any pop of color. You can do hot pink, yeah. you can do orange, you can do anything, just to make it pop. Or you can stick with the black and white and it'll still be cute. Yeah, I pair this dress with a hot pink belt. You could do hot pink it heels, be so cute. whatever. It's a hot dress. Yes. You need to make it bright. <laughs> Next, we have a peplum top, which is one of my favorites. Um, I brought one, one of my more casual peplum to show that this trend really should be staying because this can be paired with anything. I wear this with my pajama pants, I wear it with jeans, but I also have a more conservative pe peplum top that I would pair with a nicer skirt and heel. Yes, these with pencil skirts look awesome. I love peplum with pencil skirts. So. Yeah, it's very slimming too, which is great. Ruffles <laughs> look great on everyone. Yeah. All right, and then we have the fur jacket, which is a trend to stay. Fur, um, first, fur will go with anything. I mean, it's like, it dresses up anything. It's just fabulous. So I feel like fur is here to stay also. Yeah, one of our Facebook friends, Caroline Shaw, she said that fur is going nowhere and she wants it to stay around. And I agree. I think it's beautiful. It can dress up any outfit. And yes. It's very classic. So now moving on to shoes. <laughs> okay, one of our followers, um, explain that sequence boots should be out of the picture and I mean these are personally one of my own pairs I mean I I don't know I feel like if you're gonna do it 
make it, why did I make it glittery? Why did I make it, you know, cute, you know? So, and I'm a big fan of sequins. I love sequins. So, um, I don't know, what do you think about it? I think sequin boots aws are awesome, um, especially when it comes to Uggs. Uggs are something that should be there, a worst case scenario, if you're running out of the house, do mm -hmm. not splurge on Uggs. But if you're gonna get them, why m not make them shine? So I think glittery boots are great. I saw a great pair of boots um, that are cowboy boots that have sequins on them. And I think that was awesome. I think you have to have the right kind of style to rock it, but it is great. It's a trend to stay. Yeah. Next, we have these studded flats. I personally love these. Mm -hmm. um, studs are in a lot. They're very in. And um, just like the rocker type of look, it's very in. It's very new. It's very fresh. So. Yeah. I like that. It's fabulous. And this pair you could put with bright colors and you'll look great. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning into Market Style. If you have any trends, do's or don'ts, tweet at us or Facebook yeah. at Marquette TV. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Fabulous as ever, ladies. And thanks for throwing in my comment about the infinity scarf. Definitely a do. We've got to take our first break for the night, but don't go anywhere because Marquette Live will be right back. This week on Weird in Review, a New Orleans law student is arrested after a joint falls out of his pocket in the middle of court. Apparently, he was too busy passing doobies to pass the bar. And in Georgia, officials propose to save money by putting prisoners in fire stations. Because fighting fire with felony is the best way to quell a raging inferno. I'm Cassandra Jaskolski, and your weekly weird is just moments away. From through the woods, into the big city, EKK Productions presents The Roommates. Two girls, one room. Compromise is not their style. Blair believes that beauty is pain, while Sarah believes that plaid is fad. How will these two survive the year? Tune in this Tuesday at 7 to see how their fates will unfold on The Roommates. Good evening, guys and ghouls, and welcome to the Saturday Night Splatter Disco. I'm your host, Vampanova. Tonight, we travel back in time to the year 1986 for that swing and slasher classic, Chopping Mall. Where shopping just might cost you an arm and a leg. So bust out your snuff boxes and celebrate Thanksgiving with me, Vampanova. See you on the other side. Welcome back to Marquette Live. I'm your host, Jessica Clark. Next, we have Dating 101 with our relationship guru, Sebastian, sharing with us how to deal with an ex when in a new relationship. I'm all ears for this one. Over to you. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I know I had. That's why I'm not wearing a tie today. I ate a lot of food, and my neck is bigger than it used to be, so I can't bottom my shirt anymore. But it's OK, because it only happens once a year, right? But anyway. Welcome back to Dating 101. Uh, last time uh, we talked, we were talking about uh, how you should act in a breakup. Because let's be honest, they all happen. Uh, it's a sad time when they do happen, but still, they will happen. Uh, but how are you supposed to deal with your exes or ex uh, when you get into a new relationship? Uh, it's a problem that many people face in today's society where uh, marrying the first person you ever meet becomes more and more rare. Uh, and I've been thinking a lot about this. I mean, because I mean, if you're on a first date with a new girl and you get a text from your ex, what are you going to do? Are you answering the text? Are you not even going to take your phone out? This question is a neat, neat answer so we can be safe when we're out dating in the world. Uh, and I, I would say like this, uh, if you have an ex, even if you guys broke up on bad terms, good terms, you still have to uh, talk to them and be a nice person. I mean, you don't want to throw them away whatever happened. Because uh, you know, you got to be a respectful human being. You can't just be mean to people. Uh, but anyway, when you're out with a, a new girl, let's call her Marlo, uh, and you're sitting on a date, and you get a text, uh, explain to her, yeah, you know, I had a relationship before you. My girlfriend just texted me. Uh, I don't know. I'm, obviously, I'm not seeing her anymore. I'm seeing you. A little smile and a wink, maybe. Uh, and just keep the conversation flowing. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I, I got a personal story. I just broke out with my ex-girlfriend. She was seeing a new guy. I think I called her about 29 times. Don't know why. I had been 
drinking a lot of things that night, and you know, was a was a bad night. Was with a lot of bad memories. Uh, anyway, still, when things like that, like that happen, just turn your phone off. Respect both yourself and the person you just started dating. As well, uh, if you're dating someone new and you're on Facebook, don't don't go liking your ex-girlfriend's pictures in a bikini at the beach. That's just dis disrespectful to the person you're hating. It's something, it's completely different if it's like a, an old friend's picture you're liking. But if it is your ex-girlfriend, that's just mean to the person you're starting going out with. Uh, and when it comes to gifts and such, I mean, for example, this watch, I got it for my ex-girlfriend. I'm still using it because I think it's a good looking watch. I hope you guys agree. Uh, but I'm not going to stop wearing it just because I'm in a new relationship. Uh, being in a new relationship doesn't mean you have to erase your past. As Oscar Wilde said, uh, every sinner has a future, every saint has, has a past. And it's something we have to live with. And if the person you just started dating don't respect that, well, then maybe you're about to get a new ex. Uh, that's all I had for this week. Be sure to turn in the next week. Thank you, Marquette. Keep on flirting. Great advice as always, Sebastian. I swear, where was this segment my freshman year? Always some great tips. Next up, we have Lo Holman, who got the chance to interview Spencer Bonahum about MU Athletics, and our very own Kristen Powers about MU Melodies. And that is spelled by putting the words me and ladies together. Clever. Take it away, Lo. Thanks, Jessica. Today on What's Up, Marquette, I'm joined by Spencer Bonahum and Kristen Powers. Both are leaders of two emerging organizations here at Marquette University. Spencer's co-founder and member of the Marquette Superfans, a group I'm sure many of you have heard while attending Marquette games. While Kristen is president of Marquette's first and only all-female a cappella group, the Melodies. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for taking out the time. <laughs> so Spencer, tell me, um, with the Marquette Madison game, obviously this is a huge game for Marquette. Um, is there anything special we should be anticipating for it? What do you guys have planned for us? Um, a little bit. We've got a lot of new chants that we've been working on, and some of those were introduced um, at the first game. So if you were at that, you probably heard them. Uh, but for anyone that hasn't been to a Marquette Madison home game, just expect um, a crazy huge crowd, a lot of noise, uh, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, and it should be a really fun game. Now, since this is pretty like highly anticipated, how early do you think fans should like come and get ready for it? Well, that's a question I get asked a lot because I go pretty early to all the games, uh, and it really varies from game to game. Um, as many people know, they'll, they'll open the doors an hour and a half before the game starts. Uh, I would anticipate people being outside anywhere between four to six hours ahead of the game probably, uh, maybe a little bit more. So uh, if you went by the Bradley Center by 10 or 11 in the morning, you'll probably see people outside. Now, what separates a super fan from a regular fan? Well. Marquette Superfans actually as an organization uh, is one of the registered student organizations through the Office of Student Development. Um, I wouldn't say anything really separates us except for a little bit more enthusiasm for our sports programs here. Um, as the president of the group this year, one of the things that we're really trying to do is bring the organization back into light. Um, it was created a while back, about 10 years ago, uh, but it kind of died off. Um, when it was originally created, it was by some really enthusiastic fans, uh, and they've lost touch with that over the years. Uh, so myself and Jim Love, as the two that are sort of trying to bring it back, uh, have really worked to engage more fans and hopefully create a more unified and a louder student section for basketball and for other sports too. Okay, so then do you guys separate or change rather the chance for men's basketball versus like female's basketball players? Um, not particularly. Uh, <coughs> we try to make all the chants that we've come up with and ones from the past fit for every sport. So. Uh, you can use them at a men's basketball game, a women's game. Um, the I Believe chant that's been a big one that we've done this year. Uh, I've heard even at volleyball games, soccer games. So uh, it's really nice that they're versatile. You can use them anywhere. All right, great. Now, Kristen, you are the founder, or president rather, of the female acapella group Mo Melodies. Yes, I am. Um, tell me how that whole thing got started. Well, actually, the Golden Blues gave us the idea. <coughs> they sent out an email to about eight of us. and. We're really passionate about starting a female a cappella group. And then from there, we kind of all met together and talked about how we were going to get it started, um, did all the paperwork, and we actually just got approved today of being an official oh, group on campus. So that's exciting. But yeah, we just kind of talked it out, and we all had the same interest of singing. So it really worked out to start a group. Now, how often do you guys practice then, since you guys are still forming and whatnot? We practice three days a week for about two to two and a half hours a day. So right now we're practicing Thursday, Friday, and Sundays. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys have your first big show coming up too. How excited are you guys for that? 
We're super <coughs> excited. Our personal show will only be next semester, so keep a lookout for signs and when to come. But this Saturday, we are actually opening with the Naturals for the Golden Blues. And then next Friday, December 7th, we are opening for the Naturals with the Golden Blues. So we're really excited because they, both of those groups are, have great fan bases, so hopefully they can share the love a little bit. <laughs> now, will you guys be doing any future collaborative work with the groups too? Definitely. Um, the Naturals have been great with that since they are kind of the all male a cappella group and where they're all female, so it works really well together. We've gone to their practices, talked to them a lot, and next semester will be filled with a lot of fun music making, so <laughs> we're really excited. That's great. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on today. Um, I really do appreciate it. And just to let you guys know, too, um, if you guys can't make it to any of these other great student organizations, there's always, of course, the Marquette Late Night Movie to Show. Um, don't stay up too late for final studying, because I know that's also coming up. But just remember to always take time for yourself. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm Lauren Holman. Back to you, Jessica. Thanks for those awesome interviews, Lo. We've got to take another break, but when we return, we'll have a live performance by Charlie Geiger. Don't go away. Tired of regular operation? Need some excitement in your life? Then be a contestant on Operation Extreme, the only show where a person's life is really in your hands. Use this fork. Use this wrench. Or use this steaming hot iron. Anything to help you succeed. That's right, folks. Watch Operation Extreme, Tuesday nights at 8, right after The Roommates. Thursday, October 25th, On the Clock investigates the assaults and armed robberies that have taken place on campus. Also, we'll take a look at, at what DPS is doing this year to improve campus safety. We also sit down with RA Kristen Powers to talk about dealing with the university's new alcohol policy. Being an RA has definitely been a challenge, but it's also taught me a lot. Tune in Thursday, October 25th at 6, 5 central for On the Clock. Coming this Christmas. Yo, listen up, college students. Want to know the secret of feeding your entire campus community with only five loaves of bread and two fish and just two hunt over to meet me in church? Join your Lord and Savior in spirit right here on Breaking Bread Sundays at 9 a.m. First, how to make communion. We start by taking this knife and... For more cooking miracles, tune in to Breaking Bread on the Food Network. back to Marquette Live. To conclude our show tonight, we're taking it over to Erica with all things Marquette music. Erica? Hello, Marquette, and welcome back. Today we have a very special performance by our very own Charlie Geiger. So, without further ado, take it away. The sun's been covered with some clouds of black Everyone is seeking shelter But baby, we're going back We're both really lonely And the rain's been pouring down So let's hop in my Chevy And drive to Lona's part of town Lord, the light seems these days Are only fun if we sin Open up your doors, I'm coming in Yeah, they'll be wondering where we are But pretty soon they won't care Tonight belongs to us And maybe we ain't got the time to share Lord, it light seems these days Are only fun if we sin Open up the doors, I'm coming in Lord, it light seems these days are only fun if we sin Open up your doors Cause I'm, I'm coming in I know it don't seem right A rugged guy with the regal girl But we got nothing
seem these days are only fun if we sin. Open up your doors, I'm coming in. Lord, rely. It seems these days are only fun if we sin. Open up your doors, I'm coming in. Lord, rely. It seems these days are only fun if we sin. So let me in. Lord, rely. It seems these days are only fun if we sin. So let me in. So let me in. That was such a great performance, Charlie. It was. I love all the variations you did with guitar. It sounded really good. Um, so tell us about the song you just performed. I know that the lyrics were actually written by your friend, and then you did the music for it. So tell me how that works. How do you collaborate with someone to do that? So. Um, my uh, junior year of high school, I was going through a writer's block, and one way to get through a writer's block is work with other people. So um, I sent a message out on Facebook just saying, like, hey, whoever wants to write lyrics, let me, let me know. I'll put some music to them, and I collaborated with my friend that way, and then the song came about. Great. And I know that you actually um, switched a little bit from doing acoustic shows into doing more DJing. So what's different there, and how did you choose to make that switch? Um, ever since coming to college, I've been getting really into uh, electronic music, and there's a big demand uh, for DJs up in Milwaukee. So uh, I've been DJing events uh, for MUSG, uh, Mar Late Night Marquette, and uh, sorority events. Oh, nice. So. All right. So now on top of writing your own music and performing, you've also gotten into producing. So really quick, tell us, tell our audience about how they can reach out to you and to do that. Um, just contact me uh, online, uh, Facebook, Twitter. I've just I've been doing a lot of producing for uh, a couple of uh, groups on campus, so I'd like to do that some more. Okay. Um, thanks again so much, Charlie. It was a pleasure having you on the show again. So be sure to tune in next week. It's our last show of the year and our Christmas special, which means I have a very noteworthy treat for you all. But until then, I'm Erica Forrest. Thanks for watching, Marquette. I must say we've had some amazing live performances this year. Awesome job, Charlie. Well, that wraps up our show for tonight. I'm Jessica Clark. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week for our final show of the semester, which is also Christmas-themed. Let's get festive. See you next week.